All right, talking about graphing logarithmic functions. At this point, we've already graphed exponential functions. So as you can see on the left-hand side, we have a couple tables made up for us already. Uh, the first one is two to the X and a table of values to go along with ordered pairs there. What I wanna point out though are key points that we always identified on these exponential graphs. And those occurred at zero, one and one, two. All right, we're also gonna have key points on logarithmic function graphs. And those key points in general, what we're gonna be looking at are these key points that are going to be right here and right here. As you can see, these really correspond that um, what happens here is you flip flop the X and Y values because these are inverses one another. So if our key points were zero, one and one, two for the two to the X graph, uh, if you reverse those X and Y values, you get one zero and the base comma one. Um, so as you're looking through on these, um, just keep these key points in mind. We're gonna track those around as we try to draw these graphs. I'm gonna point out one more at the end of this video for if our base is between zero and one, an additional key point that's really handy to know about. But let's take a look at the graphs over here on the right-hand side. As you can see, we have two to the X's graph up here in red. So two to the X, we have those key points, the zero, one, and the one, two. Whereas we have corresponding key points basically going on in our logarithmic graph, we have one, zero. And notice the symmetry that goes on here because these are inverse functions on one another. They're gonna be symmetric with respect to this line, y equals x. Basically these points are going to jump across that line. So the other key point here was at two, one the base comma one. Um, exponential functions had a horizontal asymptote. We got close to the x-axis out this direction. Whereas logarithmic functions have a vertical asymptote at the y-axis. We get very close to the y-axis, but don't cross it. Um, that's going to be at x equals zero for a vertical asymptote, unless it gets moved around. All right, some other things to mention on these are just about the domain and range. Um, that they invert from one another based on exponential function and logarithmic function. So the domain of logarithmic functions is just gonna be positive values. So from zero to infinity. Also, you can think to yourself, we're only allowed to plug positive values into the function. So whatever's on the inside of the function, you wanna make sure that's greater than zero or positive. The range, however, they go down forever. And they also go up forever as well. So the domain, or sorry, the range is gonna be from negative infinity to positive infinity. So this is outlined in the box at the bottom, domain zero to infinity, exclude zero, range negative infinity to positive infinity. And then these key points, which I already pointed out up above, um, these are gonna be increasing if our base is greater than zero, but they're gonna be decreasing if our base is between zero and one. So you can kind of get a look at what the two different types of graphs look like. Base bigger than one, they have this kind of sh shape going. Base between zero and one, they have this sort of look going. Now that key point may be a little bit tricky to be able to graph if we're asked to graph one of these. So let's look at a side example here. Let's say our function was log base one third of X. Now sure enough, we would have key points going on at one third comma one, and also the ordered pair one comma zero. However, if you're trying to graph one third comma one, that can be a little bit tricky if it's not an integer that you're trying to graph on graph paper. Instead, let me give you one additional key point. It's gonna be the reciprocal of whatever the base is. So the reciprocal, sometimes we can write that as one over B comma negative one. In our specific example, because I brought up one third being our base, its reciprocal would be when you flip it upside down. So instead of one over three, three over one, which is equivalent to three comma negative one. So if I were graphing this one in particular, what I would do is I would plot the ordered pair one zero because that'll be pretty easy to plot the X intercept. And then this additional point and remember that's used whenever we have a base between zero and one, like a proper fraction, you flip the fraction upside down and use its reciprocal comma negative one as an additional point. All right, hope this helps out on getting some key points on each of our graphs. 
for logarithmic functions and getting the graph started anyway. We'll do more using transformations in a bit.